Two years after officially becoming a state, the Nebraska government accepted federal land and the University of Nebraska was created in Lincoln. The creation of this new university allowed the sons and daughters of the rugged pioneers to become the first college students in the state. And as such, they tried to emulate their sophisticated counterparts at the Ivy League schools by forming fraternities, sororities, and clubs. Meanwhile, back east, a new athletic sport was causing a sensation at the Ivy League schools of Harvard, Princeton, and Yale. Football. First played as casual intramural games at Eastern Ivy League schools, the American version of football slowly evolved into an organized sport in the late 1860s. The game became wildly popular as people all over the nation followed the intense battles between Harvard, Princeton, and Yale for the championship pennant. It wasn't long before the game began to be played in other lesser-known universities and colleges across the country. It became popular for different reasons in different areas of the country. Um, it was much more of a strategic game in the East and uh, kind of considered almost a high-class operation with Princeton and, and those folks, but when it came out west, it became much more bohemian. And what they really liked about it was the rough and tumble, slugging, hitting, uh, brawn part of the game. And that's what developed in the West. And it's one of the reasons why it took so long for it to develop in the West, because it wasn't considered true football. It was more pugilistic in its uh, origins. It used to be you could not get a team from Illinois to come past the uh, Mississippi River to ever play anybody. Um, but that soon changed. A lot of that was Nebraska, Nebraska and its fans. By 1883, students at the University of Nebraska called for the formation of an official school team. If a football team could be formed, we might, in the years to come, have enough college enthusiasm to designate ours as a real college, and not a gathering place for those who do not know what a live college should be. In the early 1880s, the student newspaper had advocated the, the creation of a football team to represent the school. I've even read accounts of, of uh, uh, playing football uh, without, a, without a ball. I, I think the university itself was still getting organized. So I think that, you know, at first there was probably fringe interest or there was interest on the part of a few students or the students who were interested weren't very organized and that over time, you, you know, they, they made more and more noise and it was more effective and, and they made better arguments. I think the students probably figured out and the faculty and the administration all figured out that this could have some value, um, both for, you know, a, as, as a healthy activity, uh, as a great spectator sport, and maybe as something that would be good for the school. Our football team has been challenged by the YMCA of Omaha. It is to be hoped that this sport will soon occupy the position it should hold in the university. However, if the University of Nebraska is going into the football business in earnest, as now seems probable, it will be necessary to properly clothe the university team. Canvas suits for the 11 would cost about $35. In the meantime, our new team now has a coach. Dr. Langdon Frothingham, a Harvard graduate and former player for that school, will coach our boys in preparation for their first match on Thanksgiving Day. He came from out east, and near as that I can tell, there's his greatest contribution to the sport of uh, football in Nebraska was the he owned a football. So he really was there in, in spirit, but how much he actually contributed to the, the sport, I think there's still a lot of open minds on that one. There was this movement, you know, to get a team who, who was going to coach this team while well, Frothingham had a football, knew something about it, and actually had uh, exposure to where the game was formed in the East in, uh, in those Ivy League schools. I think he helped organize the team or at, at least give the rudiments of the, of the game to the, to the students to, to play the game and actually uh, at some point scrimmaged with his students. By the end of October 1890, the newly formed University of Nebraska football team had a coach, uniforms, and an opponent for their first game. However, the one thing the new team didn't have was a name. If you look in the early days of, of reports of Nebraska football, uh, most of the nicknames that were assigned were really more for pros, for journalists who got tired of using the phrase, our boys, the team, the players. They needed something a little more flowery in the style, so they would come up with descriptive terms. There were several things that 
that uh, were applied as nicknames, none of which I think were actually sanctioned by the university, that the university said, okay, this is the, this is the nickname of our team. I don't, I'm not even sure that that concept existed at that time. That's probably one of those things that, that you would look back and say, how would people look at football then as, as, as they would look at it now? Yeah, there are a lot of different stories about where the name comes from, but I found really that there were two seemed to two stories seemed to kind of predominate. And one of them was that a journalist came out in the 1870s. There was a drought going on. He said that the bugs were so bad that they were devouring all the corn before it could be picked, and there was nothing left for the people of Nebraska to, to eat other than the bugs themselves. And I think the name bug eaters might have gotten started from that or that contributed to it or something. But I think there is also, there was a bird that everybody would see flying around in the, at, at dusk, chasing after bugs, you know, 50, 100 feet in the air. They're all over the place and they're night hawks. And I believe their nickname was bug eaters. You know, they dart around and grab their prey and maybe, uh, maybe it seemed like a, a good name, the bug eaters. I think if they had instead chosen the night hawks, Nebraska Nighthawks has a little bit more of a ring to it. I think the name might have survived, but uh, Bug Eaters, that one, uh, that was born under a bad sign. I think the initial reference was in some way derogatory to these people out on the plains, you know, they're eating bugs to survive. But the actual reference was that these are such hardy individuals, if they have to resort to eating bugs to survive, to stay there, they'll do that. That's what they're going to do. And so I think that the, the application of that name to the football team basically at that time, if in fact anybody ever did refer to them in print as, as bug eaters was, was more of a positive kind of description that these are hardy individuals, these are rugged individuals that they'll do what they have to do to survive and not be driven away.